This is a demonstration of the bid management feature now included in our opening suite Advantage product. This feature was developed to assist distributors in managing the project estimating cycle at both the project level and the bid recipient level. It is designed to help provide answers to questions such as what projects have not been assigned to an estimator, what is the total value of current uh, quoted estimates, and what is the breakdown by division, estimator, salesperson, bid recipient, territory, city, etc. And for the same type of breakdown, perhaps what is my close ratio and what is my lost uh, bid ratio. In this demonstration, you will learn what specific information is required and the general workflow required to support this feature. Um, one of the key points to keep in mind as we go through here, uh, there's one key element that drives this uh, and makes this information available for, uh, for analysis, and that is the bid due date. So as you set up a project, uh, it's, it's important that there be with an initial setup, at least one section, and of course a bid due date okay, associated with that. Again, without that bid date, due date information, uh, the project will not be reflected <clears throat> on any of the subsequent reporting and management windows. Let's have a look at the uh, typical workflow. When a project is, is first defined as a potential for, for bidding, uh, the first exercise is to set up that project with as much information that is known, and you do that through the project window here, as I've got laid out. Uh, I've got a project 20492 here, um, and looking at the minimum information that's required here, uh, typically a name and address, but more importantly in the sections tab, as I mentioned earlier, you must have at least one section uh, defined here with a bid due date uh, to, to drive this information through the system. Aside from that, in the in the sections tab here, uh, the, the estimator, uh, if you know who the, if it's been assigned yet, uh, at this point you would assign it here. If not, you just leave it blank, the same as the inside salesperson. Back on the setup window itself, uh, some of the more key information, uh, project type, uh, territory, uh, division will come in by, by your default, but it's obviously important for that to be set as well. The building cost uh, is probably a key number as well. Certainly, if you haven't decided yet to get an idea of, uh, of the magnitude of the project when you're analyzing that uh, for, for potential uh, estimating and bidding. The rating is another key one here, uh, and this is a, a value that you would set up yourself uh, in a table, and if we look in our maintenance, miscellaneous tables and project rating. We have here, these tables here can be set up. I've just got a few, so I've got inactive uh, here, for example, but I've just set them by the ones I primarily use as a high, medium, low, and it just means it's, it's my anticipated close rate on this. Uh, you know, if it's a if high potential of getting this job uh, on, my, uh, on my bid, then I'll set those to a rating of one. Doing that, if, if a decision is made uh, not to bid this job for whatever reason, you need to go into the Sections tab and go under the Status. When, these, when this is set up initially, by default it will set up in the open status, which just means there's nothing happening to it yet, it's just a, it just indicates it's an open state. If you if you decided not to bid this, uh, just select one that's appropriate here, uh, and it maybe it's just that you've canceled. Maybe it's a job that was entered and that never should have been, so you don't want to bother in analyzing that at all. Uh, just mark it canceled. But you may want to know if you haven't bid this because maybe you you weren't uh, you don't handle the product um, that was dictated uh, for the project, so you weren't able to bid on it, or maybe uh, no bid for resource. It might be another one where your guys are just too busy. Uh, you, you expect to have a low close rate on that, so. Uh, probability of close, I should say. Um, so you may just uh, say, you know, uh, bypass it just because of resource problems. So you would click uh, no bid for resource here. So it just provides uh, good information for, for subsequent analysis on, on jobs that you've uh, identified as, as, a, as a potential bid prospect here. Otherwise, if you've decided to, uh, to do the bid, um, you would come in, if you haven't already signed an estimator to that, you would do that. Come into here and set your estimator. Um, and again, inside salesperson, but the estimator is probably the key one here. And uh, continue with, uh, with doing your estimating. And when they've completed that, and in the pricing window, uh, you've set it as quoted. When you come back into the, the project, you'll notice that this status here will all, all automatically be set to quoted as a result of the pricing window that, uh, that was set uh, earlier by the estimator. And in the Bids tab, you 
will now enter a list of the bid recipients who you submitted these uh, the bids to, and um, you do that by doing a right click here and doing an add recipient and um, doing a search from your from your list of recipients and just bringing them into place here. And for each uh, bid recipient, you'll down to the bottom here in the bottom pane, the system will automatically bring in the sections that were bid or estimated uh, on this project and showing the, the status from the section by default to come in as, as active. You, you can set that to inactive, which is not applicable for this uh, bid recipient. And the bid status, the, now the bid status is specific to, uh, to the recipients. Okay, it's different than the section status. As well, uh, the user has the ability to set up their own bid statuses, whatever makes sense as far as uh, for analytical purposes, what makes sense to group these. And you set those up through the maintenance window, miscellaneous tables, and recipient bid status. And you just identify here uh, you know, what makes sense to you, again, for, for uh, reporting and uh, uh, analysis purposes. Notice here we have one item that's checked as a default, and that's strictly for purposes of when you add a recipient, that bid status will automatically drop in. And I have open set up, which is a, a, a typical one. At this point, then, open is, is applicable. You're, you're going to send this bid to, to this recipient. And up above here, you will drop in the contact name, media type, and, and media number if that information is known. The bid due date is, is kind of an important number of the date that you actually place the bid, uh, who submitted it, and then the, the bid status here is just a, uh, a, a just an identification of how the, the bid is set uh, uh, by section here. And you could have a mixture here possibly as well by, by section. Now, if you found is, um, the, the results of the bids um, were not successful, again, equally important to go in here and record the, the results of those uh, uh, the bids and those have received. Uh, if by some uh, chance you had not been awarded the job, come into the section status here and record it as a, uh, a lost bid. And when you do so, you'll, you'll get a, be prompted to, to ask if you want to set the associated product to by others. Um, this only becomes important if you've been, if you haven't been awarded uh, the, the whole job, for example, maybe rewarded, you know, the, the metal and the hardware, but not the wood doors. Well, what you could do uh, when you set that is if you say lost bid for wood doors, it'll automatically go through your project and set your wood doors automatically by others, uh, still and, and keep the information intact. So that becomes an important point uh, when you then move this project into your, into a detailed project. The wood doors can remain, but uh, but just be there for uh, for information purposes. And you have the option to say no to this. Uh, the opposite is true as well. If you if you find afterwards that it was quoted, uh, or that sorry you order for it, you can always change it back to. Uh, uh, to quote it, and again, it allows you to, the system can automatically uh, uncheck those uh, by other flags as well, for my example, the wood doors. Okay. And now, as a result of, uh, of their efforts, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the two primary windows here that, um, that provide the information uh, necessary to analyze uh, that uh, bid work and estimating. First, let's look at the bids management window. Uh, we have two here, bids management and estimating management. The bids management window is designed to analyze bids, estimates, and so on based on a recipient as opposed to the estimate management, which is not, uh, is not at the recipient level, it's just at the project level. So, again, in the bids management window, this window is, populates all the bids that are out there by recipients. So you'll see your project here multiple times, given, given them, uh, the number of recipients that you've assigned to uh, and, and made bids to this project. And let's just take a couple minutes to uh, review the, um, the navigation features within this window and some of the filtering techniques. You notice here the top row is, is empty. I can use that as a filter row on any of these columns. Uh, for example, if I just, I'm just interested to see what's going on with project 200478, I simply type in my project code and immediately filters uh, to that project. And I can see here that I've got three recipients, um, AB Contractors, ABC Industries, and Alberta Contractors here. And I have a row for each of my sections that were bid. Down at the bottom here, we'll see here a, a recap, a summary of the numbers uh, based on how I filtered it here. 
So here you can see I have three recipients. I show here the total contract amount and as well the estimated cost at this point for those particular contracts. I can also further sort on, on the status here, for example. Maybe I want to have a look at uh, maybe awarded. Okay, and I click my filter, and again, I've got one award it's on the handy amounts here. So by using this filter row in combination to those, you can uh, get down to um, the information that you're looking at pretty quickly here. So let's clear this again. Um, the other uh, option within this window is I can double click on any of the column headings here, get submitted for example, and I get an advanced grid layout. And from here, I can show and hide various columns. So if I'm not interested in the um, maybe the, the territory, then I just uncheck that and it'll be removed from my grid, or maybe the city is not important either. Maybe I want to, the other thing I can do is just resort these. And I, if I want my project name before my code, I can just drag and drop that. And now my um, window will show project name coming before code. I can also identify sort sequence here, and I've got project code is actually being my eighth sequence here, and so on. And I've been submitted as being number six. So you can define those however you wish. That also define a sorting order in either ascending or descending sequence. And the other column default value actually has no purpose here for this window, so I'll let you ignore that. All right. <clears throat> Another very key uh, <clears throat> feature of this window is a, is a right click option to export to Excel. And I can simply do that by hitting my export to Excel button here. It'll prompt me for a file name of where to store that. And it will open up a, an Excel window for me automatically. And I've got one open here right now, which I'll just show you. Um, and here <clears throat> is the type of data that you would expect to see uh, when you open up that Excel document. Okay, The data with the column names already populated from the window you're just working with. So you can see it's just a lot of data there, you know, the slice and dice and so on. Um, but what I've done here, I've used the, uh, the very powerful feature of uh, 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 pivot tables and pivot charts here. And I've just gone ahead and added charts, uh, which is a, a bid, my bid status, uh, where in a couple of minutes here, I've set up this table uh, showing, uh, in this case, by, by recipient, um, and by status, the, the value of what's out there, what's open, what's quoted, and, and recipient lost, and so on, grand totals, and added a chart to reflect that as well. And I've got another out here by the number of bids, okay, as opposed to the dollars. Uh, so I say by, by using this, this grid function, uh, it, it's a, a extremely powerful feature, particularly in uh, Windows 2007. Uh, I recommend uh, strongly the Windows uh, Excel 2007 because of the ease of use for putting together uh, ad hoc type reporting, as, as you see here. All right, <clears throat> let's go back to our, our window here again. With, uh, with each of these windows, we also have a reporting feature. Up in our top toolbar item here, we have a bid recipient listing. I'll click on that. And I'm prompted for some information here, uh, the bid due uh, start date. And I'll just use, I'll go back to July 1st for this example and maybe the end of October. And I can show summary information or not. By default, it does uh, show a summary, so I'll, I'll leave that. The next window, I can um, select my various divisions, if that's applicable to my organization. This is a recipient listing I'm looking at here. I can look at one or more recipients to see what's, uh, how they're faring out. Uh, the same with my bid status. Uh, if I want to see what uh, recipients, if I'm just concerned about uh, those where the recipients lost it, I can select on that, or by default, it, it selects everything. So this will show me a report. And as I see here, by recipient, okay, AB contractors, a list of the projects that are out there with the uh, section uh, information. And with each section, what the status is, the bid due date, uh, the bid value, the gross margin on that, who the salesperson is, and who the estimator is, and any notes that I may have populated there as well. I'll skip to my next page here, and I can see here a recap by this recipient, AV contractor. So by status, okay, I can see, and by section, 
how I performed, okay? Well, I can see what's out there for quotes, the bid value, the gross margin, and the number of bids that make that up. I can also see, for example, the number of the, the times that the recipient uh, lost, uh, the recipient lost the, uh, the bid. Um, so I gave my section and the dollar value margin and the numbers. Let's next look at the estimating management. So in this window, we're not concerned with the recipient, we're just concerned with the project itself, and how it's faring. Um, again, the windows has the same filtering um, attributes and so on uh, as the other one we just looked at. So from this estimating management window, it should be able to answer questions like how many my estimators or sales people are, are performing. I can quickly see what projects that are in the system that have not yet been assigned to an estimator, have a look at uh, extending uh, bids and lost bids and so on. Then if I look at project 2478 again, here we'll see we have uh, three rows here and uh, it's broken down by the, by the section. I can uh, to filter to see what's uh, what's open here, for example, and I can see what's a high priority. By choosing that, I can filter on that, for example. And if I want to see what jobs have not been assigned yet to an estimator, I can scroll across to my. Uh, uh, to my estimator here and put the pound sign in, which is the, the, the indicator to indicate blank. So immediately I can see all of my high rating projects that are still open have not been assigned to an estimator uh, very quickly here. All right. Um, and of course, as the other one do, we have the option to export to Excel, and I do have a, a sample of that here as well, looking at the data that would be dumped out in the. In the uh, sheet number one here. Again, all the data that we saw back in the other window. I just got a couple of charts set up here that estimate values, uh, status by section, for example, uh, with a chart and the grid that I dropped in here. Again, you know, a, a couple of minutes uh, exercise and I've got uh, information like this uh, basically at my fingertips. So here I've got by quoted, by project type, and then by section within that, and then a chart against that as well. And just another chart here by type and so on. So just a lot of lot of power within these uh, within these particular uh, windows. And that's uh, it for estimating management window. And that's this concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching.